I'm Jocelyn Minerve, and this is the Minerves on the Move. These are the seven things you must know right now before you move abroad with your children. Let's go. Tip number one, connect with expats of your country of interest on social media, specifically Facebook, beforehand. Before we moved abroad, something that was a big help was being able to ask questions to the people who were actually abroad in the country you were considering. Just for example, type in expats in Honduras or expats in Colombia, or if you can get more specific, it's better. For example, we were really close to moving to Bucaramanga, Colombia. I love the city, it's very modern, I love Colombian culture, I love Colombian food, but then I found a group called Bucaramanga expats in Colombia. Now in that group, I asked, what would the black experience be like living there? And if any people of color could give insight, come to find out, majority of the people were like, there are no black people here. I have never seen a black person in Bucaramanga before. You and your children will probably be the only ones. Now, if I had just put in expats in Colombia, there's so many people of color in Colombia locals, foreigners alike. So it's really important if you can be specific, do that. Tip number two, no matter the age, make the kids a part of the process. It was such an easy transition for my kids because every step of the way, they were with us. I remember watching YouTube videos of life in Colombia, drone videos of San Pedro Sula and Honduras, day in the life of in Mexico City because we hadn't narrowed a place, but they were there every step of the way. We just knew we were going somewhere, it was probably sp Spanish speaking, and it made the kids excited. Little kids pulling out a globe, seeing how far it would be. You can pull out a clock and play games of what time do you, we think it is and whatever country. You can start talking about how fun it will be when friends and family are come to come visit. Just start speaking life into your kids about where and what life could be like. Tip number three, ask the right questions about the school they will be attending. Now I'm a school teacher. I have over 10 years of experience. I've taught in private schools, public school, common core, charter schools, international schools, and I still made a lot of assumptions. One of the biggest things I assumed was Honduras. I'm gonna be teaching at a bilingual school. The kids are going to a bilingual school. They're gonna pick up so much Spanish. Um, no. All of the school my kids attend is an international school and the student body is pretty much majority, if not all Honduran, all their classes but one is in English. Meaning that my kids get English all day, they're encouraged to speak English all day, everyone at the school speaks perfect English. My kids aren't picking up as quickly as I would like the Spanish. The kids at my school have been speaking English since they were three years old. And then because the kids know my kids speak English, they just speak English to my kids. That being said, my advice is write down exactly what the school is. Like literally open up a Google Doc, right now and start typing. My kids will go to a diverse school with several cultures, they're gonna speak language, they're gonna get fresh organic food, and then they're gonna join the school's baseball team. Because you don't know this, and it will really help you develop some questions of how much of the language is spoken, what sports do they offer, what are the requirements, are they really going to third grade? or is the age requirement different? I say this because I've heard of someone whose kid had to redo second grade because it was different in the country that they were going to. So ask the right question. Tip number four, bring your kids toys and bedding. Now this is controversial and most people will say you don't need half the stuff you bring and they're 100% right. Everything we brought, we didn't need. I just paid a whole bunch of money in extra bag fees. But bring your kids toys and bedding. I actually got this advice from my coworker when I was working at an international school in the States. She had just moved from Chile, bringing her kids in toys and bedding when they got to their note home, it was kind of like, oh, I know where my room is. I feel comfortable here. I'm settled in. These are my toys. This is my room. I'm able to identify this and make a connection with it right away. Now I took her advice. My youngest son, who is three, has a doll named Shark Rocky and he wasn't even attached to it that much when we were in the States. It was just a cheap little doll that I bought at the dollar store. But here, it became his everything. When he wakes up, where's my Shark Rocky? When he goes to sleep, where's Shark Rocky? He's obsessed with Shark Rocky. So bring those toys and bring the bedding. Tip number five, don't connect with anybody that is anti-living abroad. 
Now, what's anti-living abroad? I'm talking about those people who will tell you everything bad, every heinous crime, any horrible thing about why they can't live abroad, and they've never lived abroad, they've never gone anywhere, and the most far away destination they've traveled to is Miami or Atlanta. Which I love both those cities. No problem with Miami, no problem with Atlanta. But it's the principle. Now, when we were first thinking about living abroad with children, People told us every horror story you can imagine. I mean, legit horror stories about how Honduras, the most dangerous country in the world, is filled with genocide, femicide, homicides, pesticides, any horrible thing you could possibly think of, they send it to me. Now, obviously you want to know the goods, the bads, but every single country in the world, there's no perfect country. I'm petty. My advice is don't share with those people. And if those people share with you, I just started giving, sending every article about every major mass shooting, child left alone, sex trafficking in Atlanta, every bad thing that happens in the States because it happens here. It happens everywhere. Yeah, I fight fire with fire. Please don't talk to these people whose idea of living abroad is a carnival cruise ship because you do not need that toxic energy no matter where you go. You have to listen to yourself. Listen to yourself first. Tip number six. Kids are flexible, so go sooner rather than later, but still go even if it's later. Now, my biggest fear of moving abroad, it had nothing to do with me. It was all about the kids. Wonder if the kids don't like it. Wonder if they don't fit in. Wonder if they don't have a horrible time. Maybe I need to wait until they're older or maybe my oldest is too old. My advice is go. You are not a tree. Your kids are not trees. You will not grow roots and be unable to move. Worst case scenario, if you absolutely hate it for whatever reason, you can literally go back right now to the life that you're living right now. Especially if you're a teacher like us, there's a shortage of teachers. You can go anywhere. Honestly, it's rare that I've heard of any child, no matter what age, of having that hard of a time. Yes, when you first settle in abroad, it's going to be a bumpy few weeks, maybe a few months. But in reality, the children adjust way more than we do. Doesn't matter if it's the language, the food, the friends, they adjust more. And usually they're the ones saying how they don't wanna go back, how much of a great time they're having. I've heard of people who are two years away from high school moving their sophomore year or freshman year and not wanting to return to college for the States and really enjoying their experience. Now here's my moment of transparency. My middle child had a ton of behavior problems in the States. She's been kicked out of everything. She's been kicked out of her school. She was kicked out of baseball. She was kicked out of dance. She is a firecracker. And I, she was having a really hard time just in activities in the States. And she also struggles with epilepsy. All this behavior problems is linked to her medication. And she, right now she's only five. I was freaking out the whole time. She was the one who I was worried about. Like, will she be okay? Is she gonna flourish? Will she make friends? Is she gonna get kicked out? I'm gonna move all the way across country. Please don't let her get kicked out of school. And guess what? They all flourish, especially her. My middle child has grown in leaps and bounds with the way she communicates, how she's able to regulate her emotions. She loves her teachers. She's made so many friends. And I was stressed out. I realized that the root of it was me. The stress that I had in the States was seeping onto my daughter and the work-life balance of the States. I really believed I was spending so much time with my daughter and just really investing in her, which I was. I was spending all the time that I had left over after driving to a job, taking a, uh, the martyr train, trying to avoid traffic, but still getting into traffic. I was stressed out. And on top of that, I was spending a, the only amount of time that I have, which was little. Now that I've taken a step back, I was like, man, I'm spending all my time trying to love up my daughter. But how much time did I really have working so much, battling traffic, coming home, having to cook dinner? Because I had no help. There was no maid or no nanny or chef like I have here. And so I didn't, I really wasn't spending that much time with her. Being here has opened up a world of work-life balance where when I come home, I can read with my daughter and play with my daughter and I give her my best self. I give her my best self, not my stressed out, stressed, overworked, I'm tired, this is all I got self. And, and speaking to the people of color, especially if you're black like me, she's a little black girl with locks and I don't want her to be judged by the color of her skin or the texture of her hair, it doesn't exist here. And I'm not saying racism doesn't exist, 
Be, but the racism uh, in the states and how the stress that it brings to us as brown people, as black people, as people of color, as immigrants, it's not to that level at all here. Tip number seven, keep your house, don't sell your home. Now this is very controversial. We do own a home still back in the states and it's nothing like this home here, but a lot of people you see in articles, you know, they sell their home and everything they own and move abroad. That was too much of a liability and risk for me to get over here, sell my home in Atlanta, and then three years later when everything's triple, can't even buy and, you know, interest rates are through the roof. So what I did was we rented our home to someone who also Airbnbs it. It's the best of both worlds. She rents it and technically takes the risk because she has to have renter's insurance. If anything breaks, she has to make sure that she replaces it or it comes out of her deposit. So I'm renting to her and she's airbnb it. Why that benefits me and my children is when we go home, we have a place to stay. And so it's kind of like for me, no matter how long I stay in Honduras or wherever the journey takes me to another country, my children still have a home, like a home base. So I recommend if you do have a house, don't sell it, rent it. If you can rent it, rent it to someone who can Airbnb it. So that way when you do go back to the States, you can stay in your home. Now, those were the seven tips that you need to know before you move abroad. Please comment below if there's something that we did not cover, you want more information. Don't forget to subscribe so we can continue to make these awesome videos for you guys. And always, stay blessed.